Three, two, one. Hi everyone, how are you? I appreciate you popping by and all your comments and support. Well, here's a follow-up to a video I previously did on a very important issue. I'll link to the previous video at the end of this from the Montreal Gazette. Now, there are a number of class actions um, going against Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever of their many names and companies you want to use for concealing child abuse and the damages it caused when further victims came up and the children were denied treatment and uh, safety and justice for what happened to them. So Quebec has its own issue on this. Um, as I say, I reported on Quebec, so this is not the whole of Canada, just Quebec. So it seems that um, j Dub, surprise, surprise, will appeal the class action, the right to have a class action. So initially, of course, uh, the victims in the area got the right to have the class action lawsuit. Now this is against the class action lawsuit. Um, reported from Montreal Gazette. So it says... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses in Quebec may appeal a judgment that gave the green light to a class action lawsuit against them for alleged sex, sexual assault on minors, they have to say alleged at this point. The Quebec Court of Appeal on Monday granted them the right to appeal a judgment authorising the class action <coughs> ended down in, in February by Justice Chantal Corriveau of the Superior Court. At the heart of the class action is whether the church failed to protect its members when they tried to denounce sexual abuse. Kelsa Breeze, oh, it's what happens all over the world. Uh, if it were different in Quebec, that would be a bit of a shocker. The class action argues the church's internal reporting policies conceal abuse and have silenced hundreds of, of, of sexual assaults complaints, complaints through the years. Well, we know that's actually thousands, but if we're talking Canada and regional aspects, it will be less. Of course, it seeks at least a quarter of a million pounds in damages for each alleged victim. Now, if any of you think that's a lot, um, have a think about the lifelong effects. Some people can never work again because trauma, um, well, trauma to children, all sorts of trauma, actually causes physical changes in the brain. And it can cause extreme illness because the immune system and the endocrine system is so affected. So be aware of that. Ah, oh, make targets, yeah, the watch tower. Beware, those are two words for their legal entity, the parent company. And another society based in Pennsylvania that's responsible for the church's communications and publications. Yeah, so many businesses they have. At the heart of the class action is whether the church failed to protect its members when they tried to denounce sexual abuse. Well, they have all over the world, so it would be very surprising if it were just different in Quebec. According to the lawsuit, Lisa Blaze, now in her 40s, first spoke out about the alleged abuse when she was 16 years old. She sought help from her parents, another Jehovah's Witness, and an elder, members who act as spiritual leaders in different congregations congregations but says she was discouraged from reporting the abuse in order to protect the community same stories worldwide why would it be different in quebec blaze left her family at 17 um many just do they can't they can't cope with living where the, there's a culture of silence and suppression over reality and was officially disfellowshipped at 24. Well done, J-Dubs. In seeking leave to appeal Corriveau's judgment, Watchtower Canada described the decision as unprecedented in Quebec. <laughs> ah, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Let us save our money. Let us save our money. Ampo will have nothing to do if he's not counting the money. Uh, the alleged assaults did not take place in an institutional setting, the organisation noticed, and it was not leaders or employees of the religious organisation who allegedly committed the acts. Entirely missing the point. The point is not who and where. The point is the cover-ups, the denial, people, um, the way that people were grilled without... Um, any help or support, the way that they then had to continue sitting in Kingdom Hall two or three times a week with their abusers, and how known abusers were left to wander the congregations, wander the community at large, and abuse more kids. That is what these 
court cases are about. Uh, we know that Watchtower lie in court. I'm going to put a link at the end of this again to show a, um, a Watchtower lawyer lying to the Canadian court. In court lying. I'm also going to put a link to the at the end of this is oh, what Leonard French um, professional uh, attorney and commentator of copyright law and what's happening and uh, his comments about dark spill the dark spillver case which is still in dispute um, and his comment on Polidori um, whatever you call him lawyer Polidori who is a JW and a solicitor who has taken on the court that court case and others you can, uh, you know, have a look at the end here. Of, I've got agitated again, haven't I? Have a look at the end here of what a professional attorney thinks of Polidori. Please look at the links of um, this case and of Watchtower lying in Canada, lying in the media and lying in the courts. Yep. Shame on you. Shame on you, guys. Shame on you all. Thanks for watching. Thank you for bearing with me getting upset and um, please hang on for the other bits. Bye. Going to calm down. There. That's clever that you're trying to use it that way. I'll give it marks for clever, but not for ethics and professionalism, Attorney Polidoro. When it comes to human rights, as I'm going to explain in the next few minutes, Jehovah's Witnesses are the canaries in the coal mine of human rights. Butter wouldn't melt, eh?